Greetings fellow Future Star Citizens, Grey Headed Gamer here, and before we get into laying assets out into our Cry Engine, um, I thought we'd go over a few basic tools that we're going to need to know. Now first off, I did a clean install of Windows 8.1 and I reinstalled the Star Citizen assets into Cry Engine uh, exactly like I showed in the tutorial, just to make sure that everything uh, still functions the way it did back when uh, Fiendish Feather wrote the original tutorial. And I hadn't actually put the assets in in a very long time. So now I'm fully up to date. Um, so let's go ahead and crank up CryEngine. And this is going to be a real short uh, look at just the, the major tools you're going to need and how to uh, initially start your level. Um, some of you may want to even skip this tutorial altogether because it's going to be very basic. So you're going to get the uh, first pop-up here. You're going to want to start a new level. We're going to call this one a toot. Um, the resolution uh, for the height map is the size of your island. Right now it's at... Uh, two kilometers by two kilometers for this we're gonna make it real small 512 meters by 512 meters leave everything else the same and as it loads up it's gonna give us uh, another option for the texture dimensions and that's just I, I believe to increase the resolution but um, <clears throat> just don't touch anything just uh, right here it is real good quality you've seen it in my videos um, I leave everything the way it is standard and we'll go ahead and start and uh, get rid of the error report and you start with a basic island. So for movement, it's the WASD keys like any other game. Um, and to uh, look up, down, and left and right, you just right click and hold and, and tilt just like a uh, regular first person shooter game. So as far as movement goes down here at the very bottom, you have your speed. Point one is what I use when I'm working with objects because you can get more precise. One is what I use for my quick travel. It travels fast. 10, if you're making a huge island, comes in handy, but it will cover so, ooh, so much distance so fast that it's almost unusable. So I keep mine on one when I want to move around. Right next to it is your terrain collision. If you turn that off, you can actually go under, you know, through the actually through the bottom of your island. So I always keep that on unless I'm putting holes in something and making um, caves, kind of like the cliffside hangar. Uh, everything else don't really need right now. Um, whoa, 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 let's slow it down. So the tools up here that you're really, really going to need are your selection tool, which is to just click and select an object. Uh, your select and move tool, which will give you your, your X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates to move uh, your objects. Rotate for rotating, scale for scale. And uh, you can lock what axis it rotates or moves on with these buttons here. Uh, you have your follow terrain button, which you'll use for laying down roads or vegetation so everything stays conformed with the ground because you might want to put rolling hills or whatever and you don't want your grass floating. Um, you have snap to grid to keep uh, everything you know in line with these grids you see here. And same with the snap to angle. When you're rotating, you can set it to, say, 45 degrees to keep everything uniform. Uh, your roll-up bar over here on the right-hand side is where all your tools are going to be that you need for as far as putting assets and entities onto your... Um, uh, level so if you ever lose your roll-up bar which I have in the past uh, right up here on view it's uh, got its own little button right here to bring back the roll-up bar it is your most important important uh, uh, tool you've got so uh, next time we come to, to do the tutorial uh, you'll know the basic buttons and and such and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and just drop down just any old object a item a bar corner so you you select grab and you drop it onto your uh, onto your island and as you move through these tools you'll see you get the uh, the move bars with the move uh, selected and with this uh, snap to grid you're not going to get a smooth movement if you turn off that snap to grid you just click it and you can move it nice and smooth and you know in increments as far as pixels uh, same with rotate it'll rotate on any axis you grab it by and uh, if you want, you can always uh, lock the axis this way, so you can only move it or uh, turn it one direction. And then with scale, same thing. You just grab a bar, grab one of the uh, points, and scale up or down. So it's it's real easy to manipulate, move. Um, next uh, tutorial, we'll I'll, I'll show you real quick just how to lay down um, some textures so we don't have the checkerboard floor and also how to put an environmental probe down so we can get rid of these super dark shadows because if you look you can't even see the grids underneath that's just way too dark and you need a, a, a environmental light 
that gives you your reflections and, and, and lightens up your shadows. And we'll do all that next time. This was just to get a brief overview of how to get started. Um, let's get rid of that. We'll start next tutorial with a nice clean island and we will go into uh, laying some textures down and putting an environmental probe down and then uh, we'll go on from there. So thanks for joining me guys. I hope this was helpful to uh, the, the, the beginners. I know a lot of you guys already know about all the uh, movement buttons and stuff because they're, they're, they're pretty standard throughout uh, programs uh, You know, if you've ever worked with anything in 3D. So thanks for joining me guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the other Star Citizen YouTubers out there. Big thanks to my patrons and I will see you guys later.